Laws of Creative Visualization Law number 1. The Occult Law of Physical Visualization For a creative visualization to be successful the first thing necessary is for the operator to mentally create a visible mental picture of the thing or the circumstance wanted. This kind of mental visual creation the average person cannot do easily, but unless this mental creation is done the creative visualization work cannot proceed to a successful conclusion. Law number 2. The Occult Technique of Physical Visualization The technique law is described and directions given for carrying it out. Most of the laws are described in this first section and the practices are given in the latter part of the book, but in this second law's case the practices are given immediately after the description of the technique. I do this so that you will have some work to do while you are studying the rest of the laws. That is I give one kind of practice and the rest of the practices pertaining to other symbols are given in the latter part of the book. Law number three. Continuation of the first two laws with more detailed directions for the making of the symbols for visualization practice and some additional instructions. Law number four. The occult law of the sphere of availability. This law is one of the most important factors in the magical operation of creative visualization. To my knowledge this law has never been taught before. The lack of knowledge of this law is the cause of all failures in attempting to use the art of creative visualization. The practices of this law will be found in the latter part of this book in connection with the case histories. Law number 5. The Occult Law of Limitation. This is another important law the lack of knowledge of which prevents the working of the creative visualization art, but, perhaps, a little less than some of the other laws. However I guess I had better stop saying, this has never been taught before, because none of these distinct laws have ever been taught before that I can find. I do not mean that I am the sole discoverer of these laws or they have never been printed before. I mean that these laws existed before but their direct connection with magical occult work had never been established as clearly as they are now in this book. Also the practices of this law of limitation will be given in the latter part of this book in connection with case histories, as will all the rest of these law's practices. So I will not repeat that again. Law number 6. The Occult Law of Binding. This is another unknown law that greatly affects creative visualization work. Understanding this law and working with it can greatly assist your creative visualizations. Law number 7. The Occult Law of the Barrier. This law governs the art of changing words into emotions and emotions into words. Attempting to work creative visualization with words alone or emotions alone is a difficult process. Understanding this law can make your work more effective. Law number 8. The Occult Law of the Treasure Chart, a treasure chart or map, as it is also called, is a visual aid to creative visualization work. A correctly made treasure chart is of tremendous value in creative visualization work. Full directions are given for making this magical tool. Law number 9. The Occult Law of Emotions. The part that emotions play in creative visualization work is usually referred to but little more. Here a full explanation is given so that you will understand the part emotions play and can take full advantage of them. Law number 10. The occult law of the reversal of planes. Ordinary English words are not very good when it comes to explaining the very fine metaphysical operations of inner being things. Thus the fact that all planes are reversed to each other is almost unknown to many occultists. What is going on one plane is coming on another. And then this reversal also becomes reversed at times. The lack of knowledge of this reversal of planes is another reason why much ordinary creative visualization work fails.